Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. the hell is going on that's what i want to know how are we folks are we good that's Thank- what i want to know too you want to know that yeah wow all right so we're off to some chemistry already man we have an amazing show planned for you make sure you hit that like drop a comment um we're falling off on the comments a little bit in the algo so please drop a comment at some point on this episode uh no matter what it is you can call me fat call me gay sweaty call me greasy haired whatever you want that's not getting to me at all share your thoughts on abortion <laughs> you can do that uh whatever you want and if you're listening on audio take a fi- take a second leave a five star rating wherever you're at apparently that helps push you up in the charts or whatever the f- mm. Um, How do you do that? You got to get people fighting in the comments, right? That's the thing. Well, that's uh, now it, where there's a been. You know what's been happening a lot now is mm-hmm. there's like lunatics that comment that are like, "Oh, now that I'm unblocked, you see that." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I never blocked anybody in the mm-hmm. comments, but these like they start off, which is kind of like a genius way to like slander you, or they're yeah. like they make you look like a pussy because like, like you block them, yeah, yeah, prove yeah, you didn't yeah. block someone. So they'll be like, "Oh, now that I'm unblocked, fat boy, now you yeah, need the yeah, comment," yeah. and I'm yeah. like, "All right." So I try not to block anybody. I try to just mute. Yeah, you know, mute's good. I, I say do- something and then I mute. Yeah, which I shouldn't be revealing my secrets, <laughs> the magician secrets. <laughs> what do you mean? You, you say something? I go, "Your mute. wife's ugly," and then I mute. <laughs> Well, don't you want to see the result of your attack? No, because like, they're going to find something. They're going to say something back. It's going to hurt, hurt me. So yeah, yeah. Well, this this is a very unfair game. You got to play. You got to fight like Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> you got to th- shoot and hide. You yeah. You you call someone's <laughs> wife fat, then you go to a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, you're like, oh, sorry, I had a cold. I've mm-hmm. uh, been here all week. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyways, we have uh, uh two great it's guests. Not a good analogy, because. They would, you know, they would just bomb it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're bombing all day on Twitter. What are you? Uh, we have two great guests in the building. One of them is running late. We have Mike Racine. Good to be here of the Out for Smokes podcast. Great Good to show. Be here. Thanks. Yeah, it's fun. I saw a Reddit yeah. comment uh, the, the other day that said uh, Out for Smokes and Love Fresh are my favorite two podcasts. Really? Which I think is a very dynamic listener. Yeah. Because that means that you're into bad puns and uh, yeah. leftist propaganda. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, Mike also has genuinely one of the funniest comedy specials out right now. That's very nice. It Thanks. is so funny, man. I, I really, really enjoyed watching your special. I was hearing that. A lot of people were saying, oh, it's very good. It's the best one I've seen in a while. But then yeah. Attel, Attel put one out like two weeks after me. I think it's you and Attel. So I said- You and Attel are my favorite two specials really? that have dropped in a, in a little while, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you really made me laugh, man. I thought it was really good. Thanks. Um, so go on YouTube right now. Check out Mike Racine's comedy special. We we just had Dan St. Germain on, and I told you guys to go comment and let him know that the Love First Show sent you. I see you guys doing that. That's so cool to see. Help these guys out in the algo. Let's get these. Spe- let's get some eyes on this. Like Mike has worked in, I don't know, thirty eight years to put mm-hmm. this hour together, and mm-hmm. it's it's damn funny. So check it out. Let them know that you see it. Drop a like on it, and all that good stuff, and just genuinely watch it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna really like it. It's really fucking funny. Um, it's good to see specials being funny again. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, um, have they not been? Well, there was. I guess, well, everybody's doing them. Yeah, everybody's doing them. I think it's not even so much that, but we had that period where like you got the Hannah Gadsby's yeah. and all these. It, like you know yeah, people yeah, telling yeah. you something's comedy and you're like yeah, oh but yeah. i'm not laughing right you know what i mean they're more like comedy special eds yes yeah yes mike <laughs> is already right in that new hour yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> uh yeah hey, Han- i see her on the street <laughs> hey hannah <laughs> that was more it was more of a comedy special ed so the oh. other day i was walking down the street when a man a racist, toxic man called me Special Ed. Applause break from the audience. Yeah. Standing O. Yeah. That man was Mike Racine. I'm, I'm, hi, that was me. I stitch it on, <laughs> put on TikTok. You come out. Hi, that was me. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you guys support Mike. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Natalie has a uh, idea for the show. Natalie mm. wants us to try out little skits and sketches. Okay. Little ideas. Yeah. So if you'd like, you can send in a story of... Am I the asshole? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay. You know what I mean? You send that in, then we'll reenact it. You send that in with a picture of your asshole, then we'll uh, compare it yeah. to uh, other people's. Uh-huh. And you can send that into the Love First Show at gmail.com. You might get your story read out on the show. You know? Somebody's got to be cool. doing this already, right? This is a. Uh, what do you mean? Like, somebody, I'm sure I'm going to find out. I don't think, re- I th- probably reading them, but not reenacting them. Reenactments, nobody does reenactments on yeah. that. Yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah. We're not going to reenact. Like a script, that'd be fun. Ooh. You go like, hey, it's your neighbor, you know? <laughs> All right, you you just booked yourself for the first one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. We're going to do that. So send that to the show at gmail.com. Um, let's get right into it. What was cool was you you uh, texted me to confirm today at like uh, four thirty yeah. in the morning, and yeah. I said, it's "Good for him. He's going to the gym. He's up early." <laughs> I was waiting for Chick Fil A to crack open. <laughs> no, yeah, I texted Mike at five a.m. of like, "Hey, just making sure you're coming." And then uh, are they open twenty four hours? No, I think they open at six or seven thirty oh, okay. for breakfast. Okay. They, they have the best breakfast in the game right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. They what have a uh, spicy chicken biscuit with egg on it. Okay. Put a little hot sauce on that bad boy. Chicken and egg together. You don't think that's like cursed? No, I no. think that's a. I think it's a duo meant to be. You ever had chicken, egg, a runny egg, and hot sauce? Yeah, yeah, <sighs> sounds good. Come on, dude. Yeah, come on. They do the runny egg. Uh, they, you could. I they don't do they, a runny egg, not, but, but yeah. yeah, other places. Okay. Oh, dude, my mouth is watering. That's some good <laughs> stuff. But I, I don't even eat now anymore until night. But when I texted you, mm-hmm. you were like, "Good for you, go to the gym," and I was like playing Madden <laughs> until yeah. nine in the morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like making fucking football players work out. Yeah, on a real tear with the Jets. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's gonna be our year, Mike. Yeah, you know, I hope so. You're a Jets guy. I am. Yeah, yeah. You like when they fly into buildings? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you get what's coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes there's a downside to colonialism, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mike, don't you think that sometimes we... the violence comes to your door? <laughs> you know, don't you think that we should be policing the world, um, overthrowing governments? Uh, well, probably not. You don't think so? It hasn't been very good. But everybody else is doing it. Who's doing it? The other guy? <laughs> 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 no, you know what? I heard the CIA agent. I think he might have been on Schultz's pod, mm. and. Um, He's, Did he say, like, if we don't do it, somebody else will? Well, he said, like, this is the metagame. Everyone else is doing this. Mm-hmm. If we if we don't do this, then we just fall behind everybody else. Right. Which I think, like... And then they do it to us. Yes. Yeah. But if we just stop, you yeah. know what I mean? Now what? You gonna, right. you want to let China Who's win? Gonna, right. Who's going to do it? Like, Greenland or something, right? They're going to get really powerful, and Greenland's going to assassinate... One of our leaders. So green screen or scene is worried about green, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> You're just worried about a place where you might wear a green shirt in London. Uh, yeah. Um, but I heard Greenland's not even green. Did you know that? Uh, Greenland's not green and Iceland's not ice. Yeah. That's it's crazy. different. Yeah. Who and Harlem's was, still what, black. What uh, fucking retard was naming those countries? So? <laughs> <laughs> Harlem's still black. <laughs> I just I needed something there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, Natalie, can you, um, you know that we have a very revered... Uh, data team with this mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. and award winning. Mm-hmm. Um, could you find out? Did I hear China just passed like some kind of advisory today or something like that? Like uh, about US travelers or some shit? Can you look this up? Do you think those CIA guys are that's just kind of what they tell themselves so they can like sleep at night? I think most. Because you got to make, yeah, you got to justify it somehow. You got to justify your job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, th- I think most. CIA- like podcast. <laughs> yeah, that is the exact kind of thing. Well, they need something to. <laughs> The five hundred and sixty-seven dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's what CIA guys make yeah, too. Yeah. Right, right. The podcasting right. in New York City podcasting in CIA is the same pay. Yeah, and, the, and we make twenty grand yeah, a year yeah, yeah. Yeah. and the same fucking. I mean, we do kind of whatever with ours, but I'm sure some guys look at their their patreons and go like, "What the what the fuck?" Yeah. Can I? Am I allowed to keep this? Like, because it's so much money. It's so much money. I think that they look at it the other way. I think they look at it like, "I'm so great." Them, yeah, Here's a yeah, hundred thousand yeah. reasons yeah. why I'm so fucking great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm gonna ice out Lev and Mike Racine, <laughs> <laughs> even though they did my podcast <laughs> ten years ago. Ten years yeah. ago, yeah. Well, I the older I get, the more I believe that I suck, and the more embarrassed I am of myself and my own brain. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like I used to be. I lived in a protective. You're embarrassed of your brain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it would be a real shame if this is a, the top end of as smart as I get. Mm-hmm. I know nothing. I got no good theories. Yeah, but you're smarter than you were th- like three or four years ago, five, year- seven years ago. Yeah, but that's like if you gave like a kid with Down syndrome a lobotomy. Sure. Like it didn't improve all that much. Yeah. It just mellowed out. Yeah, yeah. You know a reverse I mean? lobotomy. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like a wrestling move. You killed another kid with Down syndrome and <laughs> added more brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, smarter. I just, I feel like a fucking, uh, I feel like a moron, you mm-hmm. know? I feel like, like, I watch these great comics and I'm like, they have theories. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I feel that way too. You know? They have, they have opinions. They have, they know. have a, an outlook. But now yeah. the older they I get, they have a point of view. Yeah, I'll look at opinions and theories of comics that I used to like really revere, like in an uh-huh. old special. And yeah. now I'm like, oh, well, this opinion's retarded. Yeah. Like I've aged out of thinking that's a good opinion. Sure. Like what? Like um, somebody was saying something like genocide's bad. Yeah. And I'm like, or like, like I heard somebody say the other day, like you shouldn't kill kids. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something. If you hit a target that was the size of an elephant, right? Mm-hmm. Is that as impressive as hitting a target the size of a little kid? Um. I, I guess not. I guess you got it, me there. exactly, Mike. Yeah, checkmate. Yeah, there's a clip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what that was? That was I thought I had last night of like an edgy joke, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's the worst thing. Yeah, that just sucks. Yeah, and then it comes out here. Yeah, it comes out right here, folks. Yeah, we'll edit that out. <clears throat> but no, you know what I mean. Like the other thing too, though, is then you watch these comics who have these great theories, mm-hmm. but then I'm also like, well, that's gay. Why don't we just be funny? Yeah. Like, you just be funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your special yeah. is just funny. Every bit's funny. Thanks. That's what comics should be doing. Yeah. It's just being funny. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do it one day. It's interesting, because when you do share your actual opinions, people go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this, this, oh, this, this, like, they're like, this sucks. They get yeah. really, they get really upset. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 most people's opinions, I'm like, just don't. Mm-hmm. There's like three guys, I think, have good opinions. Who? Who? Tim Dillon. Yeah. I think he's got good opinions. Yeah. But he's also doing s- satire. Yeah. He sat on a tire. Right. And exploded. Okay. Um, <laughs> I did his pod today, so. Did you? Yeah. I love Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tim's great. Yeah. I'm not uh, going to be roped into any Tim Dillon slander <laughs> on this show. Okay. You're on your own there, buddy. <laughs> it's funny, because right before this, you were saying, <laughs> 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 you just play a recording of you three minutes. I said minutes he's a Nazi. <laughs> No, Tim is like a really he's Tim is genuinely a, a special talent. He's yeah, a, yeah. he's such a charismatic talker. I agree. No, there are people who have like a point of view and they and they know stuff and yeah. they, I feel that way about Mullen sometimes like he's got interesting he's got interesting takes, got interesting things yes. to say. He's yeah. an interest he's an interesting thinker. Yeah. Even if he's not at his funniest, he's still saying something that's like interesting or insightful. Yeah, Louis um, that way to me. Yeah. Of like like I met Louis yesterday. Yeah. First time. Uh-huh. And um I he was he was sitting at the cellar and he was just kind of like telling us like old show business stories and yeah. shit like that and he's yeah. just one of those guys that when he talks to you just like you have a brilliant brain you just have an interesting brain I think Mullen's right. like that too right. like yeah. where it's he's you know he's telling old stories and I, I made him laugh with a thing and mm-hmm. he like really turned to like acknowledge like he mm-hmm. started kind of like riffing with me on a yeah. thing would you do fart. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> you're like why do you pull my finger I heard he but hates I think that. if you, what farts oh yeah he's like really hates him. Hmm. I think he got pissed at Norman one time for, uh, for farting. Norman told a story on a pod that he like he, like really snapped on it. Like he, Norman was in his hotel, I think. Yeah. And he like he was like, "Hey, Louis," and then he farted on his bed. And Louis's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun, you know. But yeah, I was like, yeah, I made like Louis laugh, and then I was like, I just, like a check mark went off in my brain. Yeah. I was like, all right, I made that fucking guy laugh. Like yeah. one of my heroes, you know. So, yeah. That was cool. Nice. Um, but what were we, what were we talking about here? Uh, we're just talking being about dumb. people. You were talking about yeah, being dumb, having a point of view. I think you you develop one from reading and, and yeah. absorbing stuff, you know, and not putting pressure on yourself to like do bits all the time. Yes. The, and the other thing too is I think I also used to always have a pressure on myself in my sorry, I'm just quitting the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lizzo. You and Lizzo. <laughs> That's the only thing you and Lizzo have in common though. <laughs> what the fuck is that? What is the implication, Mike? What? What's the implication? I said you and the only thing you and Lizzo have in common is that you're. The way you said the only thing, it made me think that there's other things that you think we have in there's common. There's not no. Mike, be honest with me. <laughs> That's the, yeah. Be honest with me. What do me, Lizzo, and Tim Dillon have in common? You're uh, <laughs> you you like eating pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. That sound drop doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have worked. Try it would... again. But you know, do you ever like? Do you ever like? Do you ever read books? I am slowly getting back into audiobooks. Okay. You know it's fucked up, man. Yeah. I I like reading. Yeah, me too. I like it a lot. Did you read Devil's Devil's Chessboard? I I I, I have. I, I about three hours in. I'm on <laughs> the right. third page. 
three hours in? <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, I think I killed the first couple chapters. You're making your way through. Yeah, 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 it was very interesting. But the problem with the audiobooks is you start going, well, what about this book? And then you want to yeah, tune yeah, into that one. Yeah. And then you end up listening to nothing. Well, your brain kind of starts going, and then you miss yeah. like you, big chunks of it. Yeah. yeah. Audiobook, dude, I can listen to uh, Mike Bachetti on a podcast be called an idiot for four hours. Mm-hmm. Won't miss a millisecond. Yeah. Right, right. But an audiobook, for, no matter how interesting it is. Well, it gets your brain going. Yeah. Is that what yeah. it is? Uh, yeah. Uh. I listened to Malcolm X's book on audiobook. Yeah. Study and, the uh, enemy, Mike. This is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not 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 for me, but you know. <laughs> no. uh, but he was like he was talking about some speech that he gave at a college, and he was like, "Well, you know what he's he said like there was some like Uncle Tom guy that was like trying to challenge him, and he yeah. was like, "Well, you know what the white man calls you, don't you?" And he was like, "Uh, no, sir, I don't." And then Malcolm, he's like, "I laid it on him hard," <laughs> <laughs> and he like yells the n word. I'm like. I hope nobody's like walking by my apartment. Yeah, you know. I, I think I'm about half. That's I'm like, no, I'm it's, I'm listening to Malcolm X on audiobook. <laughs> I just I'm not getting this chapter. I keep having to rewind it. Yeah, <laughs> just like I his book is awesome because it almost reads like a true crime novel. The first mm. front half when he's mm-hmm. talking about like like insights and like how they used to rob people and all the shit and his, like mm. him having the street life and all that. Yeah, it's like and then I think two thirds of the way in it kind of falls off a little bit. But okay, I was more of a Malcolm X guy than an MLK guy growing up. Were you growing up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You studied them both. I did. Yeah, okay. we, had to, we had to learn about. I grew up in the South. This is important. Yeah, you know. Yeah, where because where I grew up, there was still like uh, restaurants that like wouldn't uh, like yeah, they were like famous like sit in spots where like uh-huh. people would protest. You know, black uh-huh. folks would be like, "No, I'm sitting right here." Uh-huh. You know, and then white people would be like, "You're not gonna sit right there," and then they'd be like, "In like the '90s." Like, like the, the early late 2000s. 2000s. No, yeah. no, no, I'm kidding. This is okay. like the 60s or whatever. No, but I'm saying it was still, were we still known for that? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah. we used to take field trips in school to like go, uh-huh. and like, and this is where they got beat with a baton. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of that. And they're like, that's Eddie, the racist owner. <laughs> still the same guy. <laughs> He's like, you kids want a, milk, want a milkshake? <laughs> it was different times. Not this one, but <laughs> yeah. You all get a nice vanilla shake. Yeah. Except for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of that. You know, it it is interesting. I growing up, my best friend was black. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, a, a, a publicist just told me to start saying that. Yeah. Um, and it was never there. It, it, like race wasn't like a weird thing. Like even in the South where I grew up, it mm-hmm. wasn't like a weird thing. You know what I mean? I don't feel like, but like it okay. wasn't. I don't know. I maybe it's just because I grew up like my my next door neighbor was black, and we we like really were best friends. He was like this anime. Fucking nerdy. He was like mm-hmm. the incel black kid, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, by the way, one of the coolest things anybody's ever done for me, one time me and him were in the other cul-de-sac. And, you know, you go to the other cul-de-sac, that's like enemy territory. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't know what's going to pop off. We, I got into, like, a fight with this other kid. We were both fat kids just going at each other. And right. he was a lot older than me. And all uh-huh. of a sudden, he fucking charged at me, uh-huh. like, to fucking hit me, like, yeah. to tackle me. Yeah. Like, it was like a, it was something out of a fucking Naruto. Like, my, my boy... Just steps in front of me, uh-huh. elbow out like this. The kid runs face first into his elbow. Wow! There's like a scene out of a movie, like smoke clears, and yeah. he's just like this. This kid's going down on the ground, like just elbowed in the face. Nice. Just stepped directly in one step, stopped me from getting hit. Nice. And real, I was like, I cannot believe you just did that for me. That is fucking crazy. Yeah. Did you call him when the Dragon Ball Z die- guy died? No, I. You know what? He stopped being friends with me. Oh, okay. It was the he. It was the first time in my childhood, and I guess maybe the only time where somebody, after ten years of friendship, was mm-hmm. like, "I no longer am friends with you." Hmm. Like it was like a this is when it. you were adults. We were in high school. Okay. He was going to college. I must have been like fourteen or fifteen. But I he did that because like, dude, I was a nightmare. Yeah. Of a kid, I was just such a toxic, narcissistic, fucking. Uh-huh. Just I was a aw- I was going, th- I was just an aw- I, I I feel bad for my my parents were not great at connecting and you know harboring or like fostering a good kid. Yeah, but I was also like a really fucking difficult kid to raise. Yeah, like I've sucked. Like I was just emo and fucking. Yeah. It, it was. Not, I think I, I don't know what was going on with me, but. Uh-huh. Um, did you have, did you like connect with your parents? Not really, you know, yeah. like th- not in a conversational way. Yeah. Yeah. Like my dad would be like, he, there was a, a time when he would take me fishing a shit ton mm-hmm. where he'd be like, we'd wake up at six in the morning. We would just go fucking fishing and be out there. And like, yeah. we used to do that a bunch just mm-hmm. like on a little bass boat trolling along 
That was like the best times, yeah. you know? Yeah. But there was still a tone of like- You didn't really talk or connect. Yeah, yeah. no talking. Yeah. And there was kind of like this thing of like, I don't know if it's like an Eastern European parent thing, uh -huh. but it was like, shut up. Nothing you have to say mm -hmm. matters. Yeah. Just shut in. And granted, everything I had to say was retarded. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was an edgy, stupid okay, fucking- Okay, but now 400 people a week listen to what you have to say. <laughs> I like that so. you're rounding up the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Quick word from our new sponsors over at Capsulite. Um, if you are a drinker and you want to avoid that awful, like, just brutal fucking feeling that we all know the next day, you can go to Capsulite.com right now. That's C-A-P-S-U-L-Y-T-E. C-A-P-S-U-L-Y-T-E. Check them out. They can really help you prevent that fucking nightmare of the next day. You take it before and during drinking and feel phenomenal the next day. Um, right now, they're giving a 30% coupon code, which is GAS, over at Capsulite. Uh, put in that coupon code GAS, 30% off. Give it a try. Um, just easy packets you can take with you. It's doctor formulated, supports your liver, and the shit works, most importantly. So give that a look. Um, don't be fucked up, you know, the day before your job interview or whatever you're trying to get done the next day. And, um, yeah, give them a look. Now back to the show. <laughs> no, you know, you showed I, him, but, but that's the thing. There was like, so physically it'd be like, oh, we're doing something together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're having mm -hmm. sex on this boat and don't tell your mom. Yeah. 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 But the, just the, the connection wasn't there. Yeah. It, uh, like there's, there was the, the uh, a little bit of warmth, but there was still like, uh, I think that's part of why i do comedy is because yeah. there was a tone of like hey i don't want to listen to you mm -hmm. don't say anything shut mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah yeah so and i think when you have that you're like well i have to say so i gotta get something yeah, out yeah, you know, yeah i do have interesting things to say yeah you know? yeah so they kind of ruined my life interesting <laughs> yeah i was at my aunt's house a couple weeks ago and she has a piano and i like play it as a kid so i can still read music and stuff so oh that's cool yeah so i just like went into the bench and i like pulled out some i i pulled out uh chopin no, just Amazing Grace. Yeah. She had a book with Amazing Grace, and I just sat there and played it. I was like, oh, this is a great song, you know? Yeah, yeah. And nobody came over and was like, oh, that's really... <laughs> nobody said, like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> well, I, I was I, like... I would like to think that I would do that for you, but I think in reality, I'd be like... <laughs> from the, yeah, from the yeah, kitchen yeah. as I'm eating. Right, right, right. You're an amazing gracist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the title, Nat. Pause. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Uh, I tried learning piano, I think, during the pandemic. Okay. I learned... Um, had for Elise. Okay. And uh it is hard, man. Piano's hard. Yeah. But once it once it comes to once your two hands like come this is why I feel bad for people with one hand. Cause if because <laughs> when you figure out like when you realize like what the right hand's doing and what the left hand's doing and it comes together, yeah. it's like a great feeling. Well the because you know? the right hand you you typically want to hit lead notes and the left hand you're flicking yeah. off a Chinese guy through the window. <laughs> why? Just because he lives there. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're like I got to make my family happy, and I got to make this and I play some piano. This Chinese guy confused. <laughs> it's like, excuse me, why are you flipping me off? And he comes in, he's like, "You're playing that all wrong." <laughs> Let me show you. The first time I got on stage, I was 15 at a Panera Bread, yeah. and like one of the bits that I had was like, because I worked at Weg at this grocery store, Wegmans, and uh, I heard that's a great grocery store. It's a great grocery yeah. store. It's a good place to work. Yeah. I liked working there, and it's yeah, it's fantastic. You should go. I, I I was born in upstate New York, and I've always heard the the stories of Wegmans, the, yeah. the how how revered it is. You know, it's great. Yeah, yeah. They're well, not union though, but whatever. really, you don't care about that. Okay, we'll edit this out. <laughs> but uh, was it? Oh, so so I did this joke about how like uh, uh, you know when you you know when you like meet a Chinese person, they don't have an accent, and how it's like throws you off. <laughs> I'm like, you know, when a Chinese guy is like, "Hi, how's it going?" Yeah, and you're like, what the hell was happening here? That was that was like the first. You just out loud say what bits. the hell? Yeah, I think one of the first one of the bits first I bits that I wrote. One of the first bits I ever did. I was mm -hmm. 14, and it, I thought like, basically, I called a coffee shop. I found out they had an open mic. I'd okay. watched Louis live at the Beacon, and yeah. I was like, I'm getting on stage. Okay, so uh, I called up a coffee shop. They're like, Yeah, we have an open mic. So I was like, Then I called my mom. I go, Mom, can you take me to this open mic after work? Mm -hmm. And she's like, Yeah, I'll take. Fuck it. You know what I mean? So yeah. then I was like. All right, shit, I have to write. And you, and you thought she meant the stool? <laughs> said, Fuck it. So I'm in this four minute act now bombing. <laughs> no, so I was like, uh, I, I was like, the stool till I came. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first time coming. So I was like, fuck, I have like to write 
a set for tonight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I'm standing in front of the mirror going, yeah. how am I going to look on stage? Like, how am I going to look to an audience? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of jokes. And I remembered I had an Asian neighbor. Yeah. So one of the first bits I ever wrote was... Uh -huh. Uh, but like some ridiculous thing about like my neighbor knocking on my door and mm -hmm. wanting to, I, I don't even want to say this, but mm -hmm. wanting to eat my dog. I mean, yeah. it, d even it's as a 14 year old, right? Does it get hackier? I mean, how fucking no, it doesn't, yeah. We'll uh, figure out what works, you know? It, it, figure out what works and what doesn't. Might have been the first laugh I ever got was that bit. Yeah. Closed on. Really? It. Yeah. Okay. So awful. Yeah. So awful. Yeah. You can see me doing that bit all weekend long. Do you ever see the Asian neighbor? Do you no. run into him? No, but um, one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life yeah. was uh, they lived directly across the street. I think they, I think they were Chinese. Yeah. And um, they, they had like a steep driveway that uh -huh. went into their garage, and uh -huh. everybody parked in their garages where we lived. Yeah. So I saw, like one day it snowed on the road. It was like a little bit of ice out there. Yeah. The lady's trying to go up her driveway. She's stalling. Mm -hmm. She just goes up a foot and starts coming back down. Mm -hmm. You know, so she starts fucking flooring it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Finally, she floors it, gets a little traction. She fl flies into her garage at sixty miles an hour. Yeah, slams into the wall, into the house. Oh yeah, like where you know, like all the stairs leading into her living room collapse yeah. on the car. Yeah, like all over the hood of the car. <laughs> and I'm watching all this like <laughs> like I cannot believe what I just saw. Yeah. Sixty miles an hour into yeah, her living yeah. room. Yeah. The door opens uh -huh. <laughs> where the stairs <laughs> were. Okay. <laughs> her husband in his boxers mm -hmm. and a t shirt. Oh, she, yeah. Yeah. Opens the door and immediately down is the hood of the car. Yeah. The stairs are all collapsed yeah, on yeah. it. He's about to step out and he realizes like I'm stepping out onto the car. Yeah. So he just starts screaming in Mandarin, presumably. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's like a yeah, perfect yeah. bit. Like, yeah. the premise. They didn't realize how funny it was. No, he was yeah, screaming yeah. at her. Of like, uh, But from my perspective, I mean, is there anything funny in the world? Like, not only did she crash in her house, the door opens perfectly centered over the car. Mm -hmm. And there's, no, like, oh, man, it was so great. Yeah. So great. So sometimes when those people can't drive. I know. I don't want to like comment on that because it's you know I don't know. <laughs> but but you you do some sometimes. I I don't know. I yeah I, yeah I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm lost for words. <laughs> sometimes there. Sometimes. Uh, I wonder why. I don't. And nobody know. Nobody's looked into it. Nobody. You know. You know. It's, it, what's fucked up is that if a scientist were to be like, "Why are Asians bad drivers?" Maybe you could save some lives. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't. He'll never get the money because the country's too woke. Yeah. Well, he would get fired immediately. Yeah. That could be a. I mean, that's how you become Jordan Peterson. Right. You know? Yeah. I think that. I think if that happened today, if you're a professor and you yeah. pulled that move, I just wanted to figure out why they're bad at driving. People don't understand that one of these guys killed my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> this is about justice for Rebecca. <laughs> Have you been keeping up with Peterson at all? Not really. I've kind of fell, fallen off. Yeah. You know, I used to love that guy when he was first popping around. I did see him talk to Matt Reif. That was kind of cool. Really? Yeah. They're starting a podcast together. Are they? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, two wrongs don't make a rife? <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all, folks. Yeah. No, it's actually just called Jordan Peterson and Matt Reif. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Self-titled. Yeah. He was like, yeah, they're trying to cancel me, Dr. Peterson. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> was it the Chinese again? <laughs> that would be a fun... Uh, didn't he have him on? Did What's it? that? Yeah, he did, yeah. 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 I need to watch that. Yeah. I think I was going to watch it, and then I saw that it seemed like a little... Uh, like, Reif was talking about being canceled. Yeah. And... I don't know that I buy that he was canceled. No. You know what I mean? No. I don't think that's what happened. I think what happened is you built a fan base of young women mm -hmm. who aren't into edgy or dark comedy. Yeah. And when you flipped it on them, yeah. they were like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do they yeah, even... I know. I hope, he like, I hope he like figures it out. I agree. He's you know? probably a nice guy. I've heard he's a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. says he's a nice dude. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Except for my mom. Uh huh. She what had an awful me? time at the show. He was, no. <laughs> oh, he didn't call her back. Uh huh. I mean, you leave a handprint on a lady's ass, she... you'd think you'd give him a ring right, again. Right, 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 right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Not relatable. <laughs> How's your mom doing, Mike? <laughs> She's great. I have the uh, China travel 
advisory if you please. want to hear about it. I would love to know. So apparently they've just this weekend released an advisory to their own citizens about traveling to the U.S. and how... Okay, let's see what it says exactly. Um, urging them to take safety precautions amid, quote, unwarranted interrogations and harassment faced by Chinese students and employees. So apparently citizens of China are going to the U.S. and getting harassed by, like, you know... Uh, staff of, you know. Now, how Why? can Chinese students be getting harassed when she doesn't have an ass? Yeah. Come on, folks. Her yeah. ass. Mm-hmm. It's in the name. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we should ask, ask them that. <laughs> we should ask them. Yeah. Um, I, I know the U.S. did a very similar thing for Russia. They said no. if you're an American, don't go to Russia because they will hold you up at the airport and interrogate you. And this this really? was a few years ago. Yeah, really. I'm. I kind of. This seems like this feels like a propaganda move. I don't think we're interrogating. You know how many Chinese people fly into the U.S. every fucking day? I'm sure it's. A Pull good up amount. the live count. <laughs> this is a new app I'm working on. <laughs> I was gonna say that's it the seems clock like... in Union Square. That's what that is. <laughs> so many Chinese people are in the park. <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty good. <laughs> Were you saying that? It just seems like they they took a sample of a handful of people that were harassed. And they're usually the ones giving out samples. Ver <laughs> Go on. Uh, various reasons that at least eight students with, quote, valid documents, unquote, have faced similar treatment at the Washington. It's pronounced Duel valedictorian, Duels. Natalie. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That just in the Washington airport, eight students got harassed even though they had valid valid documents look folks mike i don't mean to break the news to you but i can tell you this mm -hmm. we're gonna go to war with china you think oh, yeah yeah i really do what you side know, are you gonna be on whichever one's uh got more <clears throat> dim sum <laughs> do we have more of them cooking here more over there huh come on folks we'll float over there in one of those little <laughs> dim sum nets um what, what side are you taking what side am I? I, I got I to gotta look into it, but I don't know. I want to say China, but, well, you know, I don't know. how. You want to say China? Do they make good, like, movies? Well, I think, no, I think they don't. the U.S. is kind of on, on its way down, on its way out. I think the whole world's on its way down, mm -hmm. and we're still going to be on top. You think? That's what I think, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I think if we're going down, everybody else is fucked. Yeah, but we're just like a dog shit society. We're, dude, we're the greatest country what in the world. What are you talking about? How? What are we? What does that mean? We're the greatest country in the world. Are you gonna give me the fucking? Uh, what do we do? What are we like? Uh, you have freedom, baby. You can, the fact that you can say that. Mm -hmm. You can say that. You can't say it in other countries. No, you can't be in Russia and be like this fucking place blows. You can't say that in China. You can't say this place blows in Russia. No, say How it in Russian right now. I don't speak Russian. Exactly. Yeah. There's not even words for it in Russian. Mm -hmm. you, the, the only words in Russian are "this is awesome." Mm -hmm. No, I can tell you, my folks escaped communism. Where? And, Where? Uh, they lived in Philadelphia for, in the okay. 70s. <laughs> no, they, they, my parents were from Uzbekistan in the Soviet Union. Okay. So uh, they, th this is how my dad described communism. He said, for people that didn't want to work mm -hmm. and for people that were like much older, yeah. it was great for them. It was good, yeah. Yeah, but it, like for example, like his, his dad used to like bust – like essentially if you just lived with what the, the state gave you, you mm -hmm. were going to be really poor. Mm -hmm. And his dad like risked his life – and like bust his bust his ass busted somebody busted on his ass mm -hmm. um, for a few dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's how you, <laughs> that's how you get ahead. That's how you get ahead. Yeah. That's how you get ahead. Um, so basically, what my grandfather used to do, he was a cab driver. Okay, and uh, he. Uh, what he would do is all these all materials were owned by the government. Yeah. So he would these. Uh, I don't know why I can't fucking talk today. I feel like Brendan Shop. Yeah. These uh, he would find like companies that wanted to sell materials out the back end mm -hmm. secretly, mm -hmm. and they needed to transport the stuff, so they would load it into fucking trucks he drove and cabs he drove, mm -hmm. put it in like uh, containers that said like Russian military, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't get searched. Mm -hmm. He'd have to drive through checkpoints, go deliver these like basically stolen goods that yeah. you've stolen from the government at this point. Okay. Um, so he would do that all the time just to make extra money for his family yeah. to provide for them. Nice. He said the way that it was back there was. If you got stopped mm -hmm. and they were like, what's in the crates? 
and they decided to search, mm -hmm. and they found out you were lying. Mm -hmm. He's like, those guards would just kill you. Mm -hmm. They would take your shit and just sell it for themselves. Right. And that was it, because right. they had families to feed to. Right, so right. that was the game there. I was trying yeah. to survive that. Yeah. So he did that. It, once he made enough money doing that, he went into like uh, partnerships to actually like turn these materials into textiles, into goods. They're running like little back end factories, shit like that, like mm -hmm. you know, selling jeans or whatever the fuck. And they were doing that. So they got ahead. They start. My dad grew up with a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Like by the time my uh, dad and my and his, my uncle were like sixteen year old kids, they were like driving BMWs over there and fucking. Okay. They had like a boat in the backyard. Like they were like living life, you right. know. Right. Um. And like my, they used to go do cash pickups and fucking bring like bags of cash to my grandma. She would hide it in the house behind uh -huh. like bookshelves and shit because like okay. that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's how, that's how they lived, and that was the only way they could live. Yeah, because otherwise, like you're... it's cool to do something different. Yeah, you know, they had a a, a fucking a cool experience like yeah. that, but it also like kind of killed my grandpa because basically what happened is they found out you were doing this shit. Like they had business partners just go missing. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was typically like the KGB would just show up at your fucking door mm -hmm. from three to five in the morning mm -hmm. when nobody would see you, knock on your door, and then you just nobody ever saw you again. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And it was just you were just accepted you were dead. Right. So from like three to five AM every morning, my grandpa used to just sit out by the window and just smoke. Oh yeah. That's he would he'd sleep until three, wake up, just smoke. Okay. And then uh that back sounds to sleep. so okay, so communism is awesome. It's pretty sick. You yeah. get to have the time to yourself. Yeah. Well, so I might start doing that actually. <laughs> just, just my quiet time, three and five a.m. Smoke cigarettes. This smoke break is brought to you by YoDelta.com, the official getting high sponsor of the Gas Digital Network. You know what's crazy? He so they came here in '96, the year I was born. Mm -hmm. He passed away a couple of years ago during okay. uh, during pandemic time. Wow. I was on my third abortion in 96. Really? No. Wow. Yeah. You and Biggie. Yeah. Um, he uh, what, he was in a, coming in and out of a coma mm -hmm. at, when he was on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. And when he was almost lucid, he would still be saying, like, hey, hide the shit. They're coming. Mm. Oh, wow. Like, that was still the, the main stress imprinted into his brain. Yeah. So as soon as he'd have, like, a second of... Like I'm back online. Yeah. That was the reflex. Yeah. So it was a obviously it was a fucking stressful, yeah. you know, situation for him. But yeah. um, I guess no system is perfect. You know, I I am of the opinion that capitalism and the imperialist evil that the U.S. imposes on the rest of the world is like just the way that we've set this game up. It's like a very unfortunate way it's the only way to win mm -hmm. is what i think mm -hmm. that's my suspicion mm -hmm. you know what i mean i feel like you, i feel like you disagree with this i feel like you are you like idealism a little bit like sure. you want us to be good and be an example of like good and, and lead the world in good i think yeah which i i think everybody wants that but i just think like in reality it doesn't work you know what i mean like you've sent me books about the cia like how evil like this the corruption runs so deep, like that's not changing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's only a handful of people that are doing all this stuff. You know. You think so? Yeah. I kind of feel like it's every. I think of me and you, uh huh. Because I think we're both like morally, we're driven by morals. You think? <laughs> I think so. I yeah. try to do good. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I I don't even I wouldn't even say I try to do good. I try to be good. Mm -hmm. I try to not fuck people over, yeah. whatever. But right. I don't. I'm not, you know, volunteering at a soup kitchen or mm -hmm. the fuck. I try not to make my girlfriend cry. By <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's big. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. So, where was I going with this? But I think, imagine it's you. Mm -hmm. You're climbing up the ranks of the CIA. Mm -hmm. You're probably gonna do some fucked up shit. Once you get, what's that powers attainable? Yeah. Are we so special that power won't corrupt us, or do you think? No, I don't think so. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you think I'm an idiot. Well, it always it always feels like there's just like a very small group of people that kind of make these policies. Yes. Yeah. And and it's like if you if you if you could go back to like nineteen fifty like nineteen forty nine or whatever and kill a few people, yeah. We might have be able been able to create like a better world. I don't know. In in what way? 
Like, what do you think that would have looked like? Um, like? If you just didn't, yeah, if you just didn't have, like, the Dulles brothers and uh, whoever, like, people who, like, I think JFK should have probably purged the CIA when he hot, when he fired Dulles. Yeah. And he might still be alive, and then maybe things would have gone a little a little differently. Yeah, but don't, don't you think? Because most people are for the the stuff that's good. Right. Like, if you actually had a vote on some of this stuff, most people would be against a lot of the bad stuff. Yeah. So that's why it's frustrating because it's like a small group of people that are kind of pulling the strings. I mean, I think that's what I think that's what people are like. But I think that the people who are like they get you saying they, people get power and it's like they do stuff that everybody would do. I think it's less of even like a power thing. I think it's the people that are in charge of the security yeah of of your nation. Yeah. Like I picture myself, like, I think those guys who are, like, CIA and, like, military top brass and all those Mm -hmm. kind of people that, like, make those decisions, Mm -hmm. like, when they're torturing some people in fucking Guantanamo or whatever, Mm -hmm. I actually do think that they think they're doing it to protect this, like, their nation. I think they think that. Yeah. I think, otherwise, why the fuck else would they do that job? There's no money. It's like, I doubt they got into it just to play spy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not enough of a fucking push you know i mean they must be like no we are like imagine the shit like every time i hear like intelligence people talk they're like oh like you don't want to know what we don't tell you Mm -hmm. like the the amount of fucking terrorist spots they have to foil that you'll never hear about Mm -hmm. and it's just their daily work Mm it's just going like all right let's just make sure but you would think they but but if it was like if they stopped an actual terrorist act you think they would be telling us about it because then they get to i think that they get to look good i bet that it is such a daily threat Mm -hmm. that you they think it would be a like risk to let the nation in on that and be like here's how much here's what we're actually here's how vulnerable with. we are yeah. yeah here's how vulnerable we are here's how much of the shit we we face on a daily basis i mean like russia just had like they gave three dudes five grand and they just killed fucking what was it like a hundred people yeah that's all it took over there i know but so so you're admitting it takes very little to like commit a terrorist attack so then, like I think so. So, yeah. so then, so then, wouldn't so if if people were so prone to I because I I kind of feel like most people don't want to do terrorism. Most people don't want to be terrorists. Yeah, I agree. They so don't like, want to. So if it was so easy, because I because I went to a building in Fidei today. Okay. And it's like you have to like you know sign in, show your ID, go through a metal detector. Yeah. And I'm like, if I was a terrorist, I would just kill people in the lobby. Yeah. If yeah, it was yeah. that important for me to commit terrorism. Right. So I so I guess I just feel like most people. Don't want to be terrorists. No, most people don't want to be terrorists. But if you take uh, people that come from an environment where they have no life choices, mm-hmm. they can't get educated, yeah. they can't get a job that pays well. Yeah, why is that though? I, I mean, there's a lot of factors. It's like a, a lot of it's internal corruption. A lot of it's just not having a fucking uh, an economy, not having anything that your nation can sell. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of that is also just like the top being the top and not letting fucking you know people. Yeah. A lot of that is also in my opinion, is, like, not having true capitalism and not having shit to make money on an export. You know what I mean? Um, well, to quote uh, this guy, Michael Parenti, he he did say one time that, like, there's very few poor countries. There's very little po- countries that don't have any resources. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, but... We're two of the worst people to be having this. I know. I mean, I feel like a retard with every single sentence. I know, but... me too. That's all right. But we got to be there's smarter no way than you, these viewers. There's, well, there's no way you, your viewers are smarter than us. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like you think about like Africa, right? Africa's yeah. very resource re- rich. Very resource rich. And so is like South America, so is the Middle East, yeah. oil. So But all so those I don't places know, this idea have that dictators like dictators that put a chokehold on their fucking nations and they and have are those, poverty. And so do you think those dictators are like hostile to us or friendly to us? I think what the US does is here's what I think is happening. China and Russia tries to influence and pour money into having dictators that are hostile to us. Like, I mean, Russia even has, like, Wagner Group protecting, like, fucking, you know, like, uh, presidents over there and doing Mm -hmm. security for people that are, you know, in the mines and all that shit over there. Mm -hmm. America is looking for people that trying to get people in that are more sympathetic to Western causes. Yeah. And that's the power balance we're playing on both sides. Yeah. It's like all three. Did Russia do that, though, in the, in the, in the, like, after World War II? Were they, like, doing coups everywhere? I don't know. Um, yeah. I, after World War II, I don't know. Yeah. I, ju- I, I would think, I mean, do you look at what like Eisenhower was saying about the Russians? He, he, he believes like we went up to the fucking wrong enemy, which is like kind of mind blowing, you know, when you think of Nazis and what Hitler would have done. Who was the right enemy? He thought the Russians were who we should have been after. Really? Yeah. Cause he th- said 
they thought the spread of communism was so dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that's why we fucking went to Vietnam Mm -hmm. and and Korea and all this shit. But I guess I feel like people in those positions, like, don't really understand why people would want to be... I'm I'm not saying... I'm not saying that I'm, you know... Yeah. I'm a communist or anything. But I think people in those... That's the clip. In those positions... (laughs) (laughs) In those positions don't really understand, like, why someone would want to be a communist. And usually it's because, like, you're poor and you're like, well, maybe we could, like, share the resource a little better instead of funneling all the money up to one guy or one corporation or whatever it is. I think it's... Here's what I think those guys who are like... Because here's... I think communism isn't evil. You think it isn't evil? I think it is. You think it? You think it's evil? I think communism isn't evil. I don't think it's an evil it, idea. Uh-huh. I think that once it's in human hands, uh-huh. it is. Okay. Because I just I don't think that's the way humans can can operate. Mm-hmm. I think until we're on like another planet and we've mm-hmm. transcended, you know what I mean? I don't think that's happening. I mm-hmm. think people are still too greedy, and you're still gonna look for your family more than you're gonna look out for your neighbor's family. Yeah. Like there's, I think there's, st- we're but it seems like any any time any time a country has tried to implement some form of like communism or socialist government, it it hasn't been it's been uh, sabotaged like externally, like the or West internally. Has done. Wait, what's, what's an example of that? Who sabotaged Stalin implementing communism? Uh, or like Lenin? I I don't know what happened there. I'm not familiar. They, uh, but, they, but, but I just feel like like they were very successful have, in spreading it. But at yeah. the same time, they would go. Stalin would go, all right, we we control all the food resource. How much do mm-hmm. we got? Mm-hmm. They go, all right, guess Ukraine gets none. Mm-hmm. And they like in Ukraine, they had famines where fucking parents had to eat their kids because the government goes. Yeah. Well, that's a shitty parent. <laughs> I would feed myself to my kid. <laughs> eat their kids. Yeah, it was a huge thing. There was yeah. Ukrainian cannibals because Russia cut off supplies going to them. Yeah. Just because they were like, fuck them. We need the food more than they do. Yeah. Like. But that's the thing. Like uh, Stalin was very successful at at spreading this and having an iron fist on this place. And at the same time, he was murdering every fucking person around him. Mm-hmm. Like when he had like a stroke, I think for three days nobody was willing to touch him mm-hmm. because they thought if he wakes up and I fucked up, I'm mm-hmm. dead. Mm-hmm. And he already was like uh, fucking genociding every doctor, every intellectual around him. Like yeah. I also think it's not only sabotage from the outside. Like, obviously, the U.S. is very interested in sabotaging shit, communism from the outside. But, like, from the inside, it just doesn't work because of, I think, the human condition mm-hmm. isn't able to fucking uphold. But no one's ever let a communist government just kind of fail on its on its own. It's always, there's always been something that ha- has kind of, uh, you know, if you look at Cuba, you look at Vietnam or, or yeah. even some, somewhere like Grenada where, you know. But that's the world, though. You can't fail on your own. Like, if you're another nation, you can't. Yeah. Like, it's the whole world. But don't is don't a, you have a right? Don't people have a right to like self determination to figure out how, how they want to govern themselves? Idealistically, yes. Mm-hmm. In real in realism, I think no. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we we talked about this. Like, what they're like. You look at Panama. Like, with the fucking banana supplies over there. Like, the U.S. would like go and overthrow fucking. You know, it's like just for land or just for like profits. They'll be like, we will kill people. We will overthrow your leadership. We'll do all this. Like whatever's our bottom line. Yeah. Those, the, the, I think that literally the. That's geo- probably wrong. It's wrong, but. But, but you're saying that you can't avoid it. You, like someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do someone's it. Someone's going to fucking do it. Like it's wrong, but the, the, we like, I, I think what geopolitics are is, is a risk board. Uh huh. It's every, everything's split up uh-huh. and everybody's going, how do I get that? Yeah. How do I mind my share of that? I, I need know. to I was win. more of a guess who guy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can't play that game nowadays because it's woke. <laughs> no, I just think uh the They're like is your character a woman? They go, How dare you? <laughs> How dare you ask me that? <laughs> well she crashed into the garage, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think uh somebody said Geo's politics. That's funny. Um Yeah, it's all about my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just think uh, we've already set a standard. We're like mm-hmm. we've decided this is what the game is. Yeah, and it's a we. It's too late to flip it. Yeah. So now it's like I think we might as well win the game. That's what I think. But what does winning the game look like? <sighs> We'd never let the Chinese now it's like, get self driving win... cars. Okay. Well, I agree with you on that, of course. <laughs> I mean, for safety. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Uh... No, we got to give them self driving cars. No, 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 I'm saying... Oh, no, you're saying... Okay. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we have to win the game. I think we have to... If we're going But down, we've essentially kind of won the game. I mean, what, what we we definitely won, probably won the game in, like, what, the eight? I mean, when did this country peak? The 50s? I don't know. I think now. 
Mm -hmm. I think now, because think about how amazing your quality of life is. You think our country's peaking right now? I think, um, you're making me think of peaking duck, but (laughs) (laughs) two, two retards. You think we're at the peak? I think we're, we're on the way down. I do think we're in a downslope. But when did we peak? I think. 2001? I think two, yes, on September 11th. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think, I, I would think in the late 2010s. I think like 2013. Okay. That's when. That was a good year. That's when shit was amazing. 20, it was amazing? That five year window. Uh huh. Come on, son. Yeah. That was sick. But that's when things started to get woke. Yeah, right around 2016, 17, I think. Well, 2016, where... it started to kind of go yeah. downhill, I think. Yeah. yeah. When did the recession end? Uh, 2000. Like, I don't know 10? why I asked you that when I could Google no, it. No, but I, yeah, but I don't know, but maybe like, I want to say like 2010, it start, things started to get a little. That's when shit better. started to feel better. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about, dude. If, if the if my life, if the rest of my life, I just get to have an iPhone, mm-hmm. that'd be pretty you, sick. Yeah. I don't need to go to space. Two thousand nine, yeah. just to clarify. Yeah. If I could just keep reading bullshit on my phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Having a YouTube Premium. It's pretty fucking good. It is man. not. Ba- it's it's a good time to be poor. You think they got YouTube Premium in Russia? I don't know. I would maybe probably. Natalie, find that out and get me the answer. I'm looking. I for. bet they do. I bet you twenty bucks they do. <laughs> I wouldn't take that bet. You want to? No, I wouldn't take it. Oh, you wouldn't take it. I think yeah. they might. I think they might have it. Yeah. Find out, Natalie, if in 2024. They have to have YouTube in Russia. They do. Yeah. Do they have YouTube? As of wow. March 2022, they do. You coward. You can't even back up what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know anything. I was only half serious. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do plugs really quick. We're, we're at the finish line here. All right. My special is on uh, the Alfred Smokes YouTube channel right now. It's called I'm Normal, and I think you guys will really like it. I hope you uh, watch it and like it and comment, and uh, thanks for, you know, giving me a shot. Watch watch two minutes of it. I Genuinely, guys, I'm I telling think... you, Racine is one of the funniest guys working today. I'm not Everyone good at hyping myself up, but, you yeah. know. Everyone knows you're seen as one of the funniest guys. It's a great, great, great special. Go watch it. It's so funny. Thanks. I know 10 jokes from it. Thanks. So I reported them to the CIA today. Great. Good. They loved it. I'm ready to die. <laughs> I want to get fed to sharks. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 They have a lot of teeth, those sharks. Yeah. I want to be like, right before they throw me these sharks, I want to be like, fuck you. <laughs> 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 Um, and uh, watch Alpha Smokes. They have a Patreon as well. Go check that out. Patreon's doing Thanks. well. Yeah, it's doing good. Yeah, doing all right. So fucking go throw them a few bucks. Thanks. A few buckaroos. You're getting a lot of love in the chat. Good. Racine rules. Racine's the dog. We love oh, Racine. Wow. These are all things I just typed. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just keep supporting the show. It, it, I had a few, you know, we're only two people today. We're a two man crew because Brendan Sagala fucking canceled on us. Oh, all right. That's all right. I fucking. What did he, he texted me like, I don't know what time, but fucking canceled for a spot. Yeah. So yell at Brendan Sagalo, but um, chat. What do you, has this been? Has this been a very retarded take on politics? What do you guys? No, think? It, we it, because stupid? we got it. Because you got to talk about the stuff on people's level. You know. Yeah. We're just talking about ideas. We might be we're stupider just, we're than just, the chat. Though. No, but it's it's better. It's see, I, I think it's better to have like more of a philosophical argument than to be like, well, actually, did you know in 1971, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then yeah. and then we're like, we just we're just kind of going off what we know, and yeah, that's a better way to do it. I think people said it's cool to switch the it vaccine. Up. What do you think about the vaccine? Never uh, took it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. How do you feel? I mean, don't I look like a pinnacle of health to you <laughs> yeah no i just you know why i didn't take it is um i'm scared of needles okay yeah you know, yeah that's why i never fucked you yeah how do you look at your dick <laughs> i don't mike you get scared <laughs> with two mirrors <laughs> Today on Maury, a... <laughs> this man's scared of his own dick <laughs> <laughs> no I, I was afraid of needles so i never went and got it if i if i have to get it like my blood drawn or something i pass out yeah it sucks mm. one time i passed out and um in a hospital, mm-hmm. and I felt that I was passing out. I said to the nurse, she was like this Jamaican lady or something, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, f-. I was like, I'm passing out." As I was like literally going down, yeah. and she was like, "Yeah, you're emitting too much carbon." And then she just walked out of the room. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> I think Your what carbon she... footprint is too much. <laughs> no, I think what she meant is like you're not taking in enough like carbon dioxide. Oh, okay. Your body's like pushing too much. Out. She just gave me a scientific reason, and just left. Yeah, great. But and that, and then it felt like a flashbang went off in my head. Like yeah, you could hear like 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Everybody should have like a mean Jamaican woman in their life. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a political party I can get behind. I like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're everyone's assigned a Jamaican woman. I it actually really helped me because I realized I was like, oh, this lady's a nurse and yeah. she just left. Mm-hmm. So she thinks I'm being a pussy. So I was mm-hmm. like, so I must be fine. She wouldn't yeah. leave me if I was dying, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you want to close out on? Um Let's I think this I is know. you're gonna like this. What? Epidemic of white women getting punched in New York City. Oh, yeah. I saw that. You heard about this? What's going on there? White yeah. women. I was going to ask you, where were you Wednesday at 8? I was getting punched in the face. <laughs> You're in a wig walking <laughs> yeah. down the Lower East Side? <laughs> yeah. Natalie, can we, what's the story what? here? There were a couple different stories. Some people are saying that it's like people are hopping on the bandwagon and that maybe one or two people got punched and then a bunch of girls went on TikTok and claimed that they also got punched. But one of the guys who was, I don't know if he was accused or found, was arrested for it. But even Oh, they found this, a guy? They found a guy and arrested him for it. But there's still other stories of women getting punched. So it's unclear if it's... it's copycat punchers. Copycats or just, you know, women setting stuff up. Some guy, came out, some guy came up to me the other night and like asked me what time it was. And he was like giggling. And I go, what? And he goes, you get the time? And I went like this on my phone. I went like... It's 7.44. <laughs> like you kept an eye on him. Yeah. Yeah. Like I went like that, yeah. Yeah, I, I. you know, it's funny. I'm suspicious of people that ask me that too. Yeah. It's usually a lead-in question. Right. They're gauging how agreeable how you are you. How you yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a mark. Yeah. It's called the punk test. I heard, I, that's they what I've heard as well. They want to see if you're a punk. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be funny to just react that way out the gate, though. Oh, you think I'm mm-hmm. a fucking sucker? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to count the amount of Chinese people in this park. You start shitting on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> so this guy's been walking around hitting these late because I saw a lady crying on TikTok or some shit, and she was like, yeah, "Well, it- what else is new?" <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "That's uh, what it's. That's what it's for, right? <laughs> that's what it's for." And my Instagram now is just porn. Is it? My explore page is just... Ooh, let me see what mine is. I think mine is probably... Straight porn. It's, it's fucking... It's that and then Gaza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is she hot? Uh, no, she's a, a place where... Uh, Mike? Mike? <laughs> <laughs> we, we deny that Gaza exists on the show. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mine is, uh, is very awful. It's an awful, awful place. Mm-hmm. And I wish I could change it. Mm-hmm. I hey, tr- they know what you like. They know what I like. It's nine pictures of naked women, one woman breastfeeding, and then a close-up of Kevin Ryan. <laughs> Good. That's my algorithm right now. And I don't know which one I'm going to come to yeah, first. Yeah, 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 right. Which, <laughs> where should I start? <laughs> Someone included- Did you ever have wood paneling in your house? <laughs> oh, 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 fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. That's not bad. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Uh, someone included a picture of what happened to Saglo uh, and why he's not here. If you want to pull this up, yeah, please. Let's see it. What's that? Oh, they photo- They did a fortune, <laughs> fortune feemster. Really putting the That's four fun. chins in the feemster, eh? <laughs> Come on, folks. somebody's got to have done that. Hey, what's your name? Five chin feemster. <laughs> this is what we should have done. Yeah, like, pull up more comments. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, we gotta, you know. You gotta fill it. You gotta get behind the mic and just. I'll tell you what. I I I had to write something this week, like yeah. a sketch for some suicide note. Yeah, suicide <laughs> note. Yeah, and I just you know you're just kind of sitting there with nothing, and yeah. I was like, man, podcasting is so much better than writing. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. with podcasting, you have nothing, but you just fucking go home. Yeah. Hey, we did an hour. Let's get out of here. Let's cash in. Nothing our, is really due. Gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. It's just that you're looking at a timestamp, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Whatever's in there is in there. Whatever's in there is in there. Yeah. With the writing, you have to like, there's pressure to like create something. Yeah. And it sucks. You just sit at your desk and you go, what the hell is the. What'd you have to write for? Um, I was going to do a cold open for Chapo Trap House and I sent them something and they didn't use it. Ooh. Yeah. All right. What is, where do they live? That's all right. Uh, I'll tell you their, uh, I'll give you their address. Address would be good. Yeah. I don't fuck with that, dude. I don't like that they're not using What's our, that? I don't like they're not using your stuff. They gave me, they gave me a little money, but uh, whatever. They let yeah. me. I was. I went on the show. Yeah. But I was like, shit. And I. It was the day my special came out. And I was doing. And I just didn't. I feel like I failed. I spent like two days trying to write this goddamn sketch. <laughs> did you have an idea? Yeah, Ooh. I did. Do you want to? And it? I sent them something. What's that? Do you want to pitch it? 
Um, you know how people on Twitter would like people. There's like discourse about DoorDash. Like people go like DoorDash exploits their workers. And yeah, then somebody yeah. goes like, "Well, I'm disabled. I have to order DoorDash every day. Right. I'm a disabled comrade. You know, just that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So the sketch was like, it's an Italian guy like saying why he can't, why he has, to, why he needs DoorDash. Okay. How he's like mentally ill and you know. Yeah. yeah. So what? What are the? What's the angle? What were? What were the beats? Yeah. He's like, you know, I. I He's like, uh, what, what? What were the jokes that I wrote? Yeah, you know, it's just like some some guy who lives in his in his mother's house. Yeah, he yeah, got in a fight with his mother. He can't use the kitchen. <laughs> that's funny. You know, that's shit like great. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Okay, all right. Nice. Where the, yeah, he said, you know, I'm disabled. I got a I, I got a brujol that's too big. <laughs> it's hard for me to walk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's and great. Then, yeah, and then there's like a lady who's like, you know, I, I saw on Fox News that Ill- illegals want to rape me, so that's why I get DoorDash. <laughs> so that's it. That was the sketch. But, it, you know, it's like you just, writing sketches, you're, you're just trying to make something out of nothing. Yeah. I have no- And you go, hopefully this is whatever. Yeah. You know? Sketch writing is something I would actually like to learn how to do. Like to learn how to do. Yeah, I would like to learn how it's, to do that. But it's very, like, formulaic. Yeah. Like, they did a sketch on SNL last week. It was like Ozempic for, Ozempic for Ramadan. Okay. So me and my wife were watching together, and like she saw, it, she started laughing. But I was like, I didn't laugh because I was like, I know how they you see wrote the rhythm. The, they yeah. do the yeah. yeah. They like it's about blending. It's about blending stuff together. Yeah, you know. I don't. I do hate that in sketch where I could see. You can see the how the you see the writing like you you see you the, can see the moving parts the formula yeah. yeah but it's like looking at an engine. Great sketches make you feel like you're not even watching a sketch really. Yeah. Yeah. You go, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Or they or it's the 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 format is just a little more like free. Cuz I can see how they wrote it. They go, "Uh, Ozempic for Ramadan." Yeah. Uh, okay, and then this and this and this. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. I had an idea one time. It was a it was a Scrabble set that you can play with your grandparents. Okay. But they can't there's a, there's a, the letters make them not be able to make racial slurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's only like one G and, you know. So you always win. Yeah. 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 That's fine. One G. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I had to but it's sub- hard. It's hard to like. It is very hard. You know? I had to submit a sketch packet. These guys were doing like a TV show that never got picked up. Yeah. And um, I could tell from the way my agent responded to it. She was like, this is not going to. Yeah. I think a Your lot agent. of stuff I submitted like from 21 to 25 years old. Yeah. They were like, we're not going to send this. Like they just were yeah, like, yeah. it's great, and then yeah. they just didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. smartly, probably for the best. Yes, yeah. for yeah. the best. Well, sometimes I'll look at stuff that I wrote like you know eight, ten years ago. And, yeah, yeah. I tried to pitch this sketch called go, Black Jesus. Claw. Uh huh. It was uh, a white dudes trying to ma- make a, co- a a white claw for black people. Okay. And it was Hennessy and Seltzer. Okay. And uh, there was just shitty jokes throughout it. Yeah. But I at the time I was like, this is. This is great. This is getting <laughs> on the air. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, they on this sketch alone, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. And as I say it now, I'm like, what a fucking retarded idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Podcasting is much better. This is way better. That I found this. Don't ask the audience. Because now you you guys just listen to our dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> we could literally play audio of our dogs shitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we'd be like, like and subscribe, folks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Mike, uh, I love you, buddy. You're you're Thanks. one of the funniest guys around. Thanks, Andy. and. Uh, I appreciate that we can come on here and disagree about stuff we don't know all that much about. Yeah. I mean, you probably know more than me. Congrats but. on the seller. Thanks, man. Thank Although you. now it's more like the comedy, uh, uh, the comedy, uh, what are you, is it going to be a floor collapsing joke? <laughs> uh, no, it's more like the comedy. They had to turn it, they had to change it to the comedy Canyon. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Cause you're fat. <laughs> they had to make it bigger. It's less of a, the comedy bunker. I don't know. No. That was not nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks. Go watch Mike's special right now. I'm like, what's bigger than a seller? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah, check out the special. I'm normal on YouTube. Thanks. I appreciate you being here, man. I Thank appreciate you, you having me. Somebody said the comedy Crater. I think that works. Mm. Peace. Oh, Crater. That's good. You should have him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.